Welcome to Ninja Mobile Dart. I know it's hard to see how hot it is, but it's 45 degrees out there and blowing a pretty significant westerly. If you walk into the wind, it's like walking past a blast furnace. So, um, perfect day to be welding in the shed. And if you see this video, that means we've survived the fires that are about. Still windy, as you can hear. Um, real low wishbones. First thing to do is measure the chassis so we know how far apart the pickup points are. And then to the drawing board and then to a jig. So that's our uh, real low wishbone jig. It's got three holes in it. Um, made it out of my, one of my favorite materials, recycled steel from Candelo Tip. So on the outboard, we've got a bush that um, takes the spherical bearing for the rear upright. On the rear leg, that's a little bit of six mil plate with a couple of holes in it. The holes that are suit a thing called an ABWT4 quarter inch joint, which gets pressed into there and then that little groove staked over and uh, then it lives in there like that, which is quite tidy and light. So that little piece goes on there, that hole goes to the chassis and that little joint will be for the tow link. And this, um, this piece of tube gets a couple of very carefully made slots in it. So it fits, lo so it fits like that and gets fitted to that bush. And then this uh, other leg, which already has a joint in it, pops over there and gets added to that. Now in the time-honored fashion, we happen to have one that we started earlier. This is the other opposite hand, which is made on the same jig, but on the other side. So that's all welded in. And outboard, there's the bush. Um, it's, it's got a funny, funny offset in it because that clearance is to is for the rim that goes past there, which is why that part of the bush is machined off. And then these two little lugs are for the, the spring damp unit to bolt in there. And it's offset that way so that um, it misses the CV boot. There you go. One down, one to go. And here's the rear top wishbone on pretty much the same jig with some different holes drilled in it. And it looks a bit daggy out around here, but that's because the top joint to the upright has got that horrible big joint on it to give a camber adjustment and the bent tubes are all about keeping the tubes heading for where the load comes in at that joint and to make all that part wreck the load nicely when it's going fore and aft you just drop a little gusset in like that and all will be well. Moving right along, I've got the rear lower wishbone in place there and uh, for no particularly good reason the, uh, the wishbone as drawn at right height is horizontal so with a couple of shims I can put it in where it goes at right height and because this car's got a spool in the back it's very useful to have a rear droop adjustment which we're doing here so this bit of 20 mil square steel has got two holes in it 20 mil shorter than the open length of the damper. So if I put the damper in there, it'll have 20 mil of droop. So to reduce the rear droop, or adjust the rear droop, if, um, if I want to, this little bracket's on the chassis. Uh, this beam goes across both dampers. And by putting a spacer in there, 10 mil spacer there reduces the droop by 10 mil, more or less. Simples. It's drive shaft time today. Uh, pretty much all of that back corner you've seen already. Um, top wishbone, bottom wishbone and upright. Goes up and down like that, which is sort of handy. The only new bit on there is a tow link, which looks like that. It's actually made out of an old OMS push rod, and it's got that little, a neat little clevis on the inboard end, which is made out of a 3.8 UNF bolt. Easy peasy. So drive shaft wise, that's the outer CV joint housing, that's the inner CV joint housing, puts part of the spool 
That's the outboard end of the N15 drive shaft, which slides in there if I push it. That's the inboard end of an N12 drive shaft, which where the joint goes in there. All the tubular bits gone, they're machined to fit together like so. World's shortest drive shaft. Easy peasy. The only challenge left is to put that a big enough weld in there that won't break without getting the whole thing so hot that it reduces the strength of um, these hardened and tempered bits here. But we can take, take our time with that and be patient and that should be fine. For completeness, there's the finished little drive shaft. Um, that's the N15 bit. That's the N12 bit. That big weld was made by the robot at the Nissan factory. That's my TIG weld. That's the biggest weld I was able to put in there with a single run with the TIG. And that took all morning because um, did a centimetre there and a centimetre there at a time. Then let the th left the thing on the bench to get back to room temperature. Cooled the ends down in a bucket. And did another centimetre, another centimetre and uh, yeah, about four hours eventually got there. Hope the weld's big enough but a little 300 kilo car with a 1000cc engine. I think it'll be alright.